Ohio, not Toledo, not Columbus, not the state, Ohio, but Japanese for good morning, Ohio. How are you today? I trust you're doing well. And we are reading through the book of Hebrews. Paul said to Timothy, who was a young minister, the Apostle Paul, preach the word and give yourself to reading, public and private, of the word. Can I say something that will help you, hopefully? When you're alone sometimes, I did it yesterday, haven't done it yet today. I've read the Bible, but read it out loud when you're by yourself, it's convenient. Not just read it, I found it helps me to read it out loud. You hear your voice speaking God's truth. It's good, it's a good thing. So, this word that we're reading through in the book of Hebrews creates faith in us. So if the devil wants us to live faithless lives, he'll try to block us. Too busy, I don't understand it, this, that. Read it quick. Where can I find that short verse? Jesus wept. Oh, I read a whole verse today. Instead of reading it, meditating on it, because, oh, it creates faith. I used to struggle to have faith. And then a long time ago, I learned, just fill myself with the word of God by God's grace and let the Holy Spirit activate it and make it real to me. And faith and hope and confidence springing up everywhere, chasing me, rather than struggling to believe. So, verse 24, by faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose, by faith, he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God, the Hebrews, rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Listen, escuche. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, you remember, he was put in the Nile River, but the moment they put him in that Nile River in that little basket and released him, all of God's power and, and, and avenues of deliverance began to be opened. That's a beautiful picture of faith. God, I give you this child. As long as we hold on to things thinking we can manage. If you have a wayward child, just remember, you're not going to fix it. Only God can fix it. So pray and give that child over and over again if you have to struggle with it. Give that child into God's hands. God, you do it. Too big for me. Too hard. So he was then seen because he was crying. And Pharaoh's daughter, you know, saw him, brought, must, must be one of the Hebrew children, and raised them in the palace of Pharaoh. Even though he was one of the despised Hebrews, whose little boys were supposed to die when they were born. Look how God can turn that around. Now he's raised in Pharaoh's palace, court. But when he realized and knew who he was, I'm not an Egyptian. That's not my biological mother. When he had grown up, he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. So he turned down Fat City. He turned down Fifth Avenue. He turned down the life of ease and pleasure and, and selfish indulgence and sensuality and materialism. That's what he had. That was Pharaoh's daughter. When he was little and growing up, Everybody just snapped to, yo, that's Moses. Whatever his Egyptian name was. That's, hey, that's Pharaoh's daughter's son. He's the man. You tiptoe when you're around that 14-year-old. 
And then he got older and realized, wait a minute, I'm not Egyptian. I'm, I'm a Hebrew. And what were the Hebrew? They were slaves, mistreated slaves. And then he, by faith, he said, no, I'm not identifying with what's easy and pleasurable. I'm identifying with who I really am in God. Now that's faith. He gave up the, the privileges. He refused to be known as that son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated rather than enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin for a season. So God inspired this book to be read, uh, written and included this act of faith by Moses. His conviction was so strong, I'm better off identifying with who God made me, although it, it ain't looking good right now, than live a lie. Because that's a dead end, but it's a, ooh, it's a comfortable dead end. Look, you know, Egyptians had their GQ magazine, and people were saying, Moses, you should be on the cover. Your mama will give you everything you need to buy the best threads around. He said, no, I, 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 I'm a Jew. No, I'm a Hebrew. No, don't say that. You don't have to identify with them. That's faith, right? It's like us today, standing up for Jesus, coming out of the closet for some of us. Everybody doing every kind of thing, and some of them really hideous things, come out of the closet, and they're right in your grill. This is who I am, buddy. But we Christians can be so tepid in our witness and our identification. So who are you today? Are you a Democrat, a Republican, a white person, a Southerner, an American, a black person? Is that your identity? Or by faith, are you going to say no? Those are secondary matters. I didn't. How can people make a big thing of what race they are when they didn't choose it or earn it? You just wake up, you know, I'm Ukrainian and Polish. What did I earn it? I just woke up screaming in a hospital. Now I'm going to make a big deal of it? That's just pride. Like everybody else, everyone's the same. We all cry. We all get our hearts broken. Moses said, no, there's something more spiritual. It's invisible. There's something called the blessing of God. I'd rather have that on me, even though I identify with slaves, than be with the elitists, the in crowd. By faith, he did that. Boy, do we need a revival of faith because we have churches in America, but instead of the church affecting the American culture, we have the American culture converting the church. Our faith quotient is so low, we identify more with what's around us that passes away in an instant. It's all gone. Oh, come on, Jim, I'm, I'm encouraging myself. Come on, live by faith. Walk by faith. Live in the invisible. Live with future convictions so strong that they affect my everyday living. Come on, may God bless both you and I with a life of faith. Bye-bye, see you next time. Mm -hmm.